My job is made very easy by Dr. Surinder, since he has explained very well about the nutritional assessment. Now I will take you through the clinical impacts and outcomes of malnutrition in cirrhosis. Uh, my overview will be, uh, first I will try to redefine malnutrition, sarcopenia and its outcome, frailty and its outcome. I will also include obesity and cirrhosis, sarcopenic obesity and some points about the micronutrient deficiency in the cirrhosis. So this has already been covered uh, that malnutrition is an imbalance of nutrient that causes measurable adverse effects on tissue, body form or function. So the important point I want to rediscuss is that malnutrition includes not only the deficiency but also the excess of nutrients. So it is not only the sarcopenia, not only the frailty, it also includes the obesity. And it rep represents a spectrum of nutritional disorder across the entire range of BMI. Patient with normal BMI can, can be malnutrited and a patient with overweight or obese can also be under malnutrition. So the malnutrition leads to adverse physical effects manifesting phenotypically as ferality, sarcopenia and sarcopenic obesity. Uh, this is also being discussed in the uh, last presentation that the prevalence of malnutrition in India is higher as compared to the world and it increases with the age and severity of the liver disease and it is more common in men and also in alcoholic liver disease patient. Sarcopenia has already been discussed, so I will not go into detail of the definitions. Coming to the impact of malnutrition, the malnutrition negatively impacts on morbidity and mortality in patients with cirrhosis and mortality both before and after the liver transplantation is also <laughs> dependent on the nutritional status of the patient. The sarcopenic patients are more likely to have hepatic decompensation, most likely in the form of hepatic encephalopathy, ascites, and also they have reduced quality of life, increased risk of infections, and prolonged hospitalization. The non-alcoholic fatty liver disease patients have higher likelihood of having steatohepatitis or advanced liver disease if they are having malnutrition. And this is also associated with the decreased survival, increased treatment-related mortality, and tumor recurrence in the patients with the SCC. In children with the end-stage liver disease, sarcopenia is associated with the adverse outcomes, including growth failure, hospitalization, infections, and the motor delay. So this is a meta-analysis of around 7,000 patients. We showed that skeletal muscle index was associated with the if, L3 level, we see in skeletal muscle index, it is associated with two-fold higher risk of death if the patient is sarcopenic. And every one centimeter increase in the skeletal muscle index and one mm, one mm increase in the soft muscle thickness is associated with a decrease in the mortality. Also, if you see the survival after the tips in patients in whom skeletal muscle mass is increased, the patients who have increased muscle mass have better survival than those who are the, who, in which there are not increase in the muscle mass. So coming to the, uh, this important concept, the decompensation of the cirrhosis and the malnutrition are a vicious cycle for a patient. The decompensation leads to, decompensation leads to the malnutrition and the malnutrition in, can promote the development of the decom decompensation. So this is a vicious, vicious cycle. We can break this cycle either by treating the decompensation or by treating the malnutrition. So, and we can prevent development of encephalopathy, bacterial infection, and the recurrent ascites in such situations. So this is a study of 669 patients. We showed that these patients who had sarcopenia, as compared to those who did not have sarcopenia, had a, around 30 to 40% survival improvement when there was no sarcopenia. Even in patients with the low MELD score, with MELD score of less than 15, the survival of the patients with, who do not have sarcopenia is much better as compared to the patients who have sarcopenia. So this leads to the concepts of MELD sarcopenia. So the MELD score has a limitation that it does not, does not assess the nutritional and function, functional status of the cirrhotic patients. So MELD sarcopenia combines the L3 skeletal muscle index with the MELD score and it it is better predictor of mortality in patients who are undergoing liver transplantation. And also, it also helps in stratifying the risk in patients with compensated and decompensated cirrhosis patients. 
In patients with pre-transplant and post-transplant follow-up, the malnutrition is a very valuable predictor for pre-transplant mortality almost regardless how it is defined. And sarcopenia by assessment of the cross-sectional imaging is associated with the strongest evidence for predicting the post-transplant mortality. Coming to the impact of frailty, the frailty when assessed by the clinical frailty score, this is a study of 300 outpatients. We showed that 18% of the patients were having frailty and 30% of the patients, overall of all the patients, 30% of the patients had unplanned hospitalization or death within the six months. And out of all the patients who had frailty, the 57% of the patients had unplanned hospitalization or death as compared to the 24% who were not frail. So the frailty has almost twice, the frail patients have almost twice the rate of unplanned hospitalization and death. When we see the uh, changes in the frailty over the time, uh, assessment of a dynamic frailty scores, each 0.1 change in the liver frailty score over three months is associated with the two-fold increased hazard ratio of the weightless mortality, and it is independent of the baseline frailty and mild sodium scores. The cumulative rates of the weightless mortality at six months were 12.1% and 7% in those who remained stable. This is as compared to the patients who have improved, improved, improved frailty scores, the mortality rate was only 0.6%. So the mortality rate has dropped down from 12% to the 0.6% if we have tackled the frailty well. Uh, this study has shown that in the patients who are on the waiting list for the transplant, increase in the grip strength by, per, uh, by 1 kg decreases the weight, li weight list mortality by around 11%. And 1 meter per second increase in the gait speed decreases the weight list mortality by about 28%. And if there is 1 second increase in the chair stents, there is increase in the mortality by 17%. So this estimates the... Uh, prognostic value of frailty on the liver transplant candidates. Coming to the uh, impact of obesity and cirrhosis, the obesity is an independent risk factor for the presence of severe fibrosis, fibrosis progression and cirrhosis. Each quartile increase in the BMI is associated with a 14% increase in the risk of clinical events on the follow-up. So uh, this study showed the prevalence of obesity in patients with cirrhosis. Around 42.9% of the patients had obesity and 30.8% of the cirrhotics were overweight. And when we see the prevalence of decompensation, the patients who, who were obese and overweight had a higher chances of decompensation on follow-up as compared to the patients who have normal weight. Uh, this was a study uh, performed on the patient with compensated cirrhosis with BMI more than 26 and lifestyle interventions were given Lifestyle intervention significantly decreased body weight by 5% in 52% of the patients and by more than 10% in 16% of the patient. And it showed that portal hypertension as measured by the hepatic venous pressure gradient significantly decreased by 10% in 42% of the patients and 20% in patients uh, in 24% of the patients. So weight loss of more than 10% is associated with a greater decrease in the HEPG and portal hypertension. No episodes of clinical decompensation occurred during this period and weight loss achieved at 16 weeks was maintained at six months. So this study showed that weight loss can be safely done in patients with cirrhosis also. Uh, this was a study which suggests that obesity is independent predictor of the uh, development of the portal vein thrombosis in patients with the, uh, who are transplant candidates. Coming to the uh, sarcopenic obesity. Sarcopenic obesity is, in the layman, it can be said, it, uh, it is a co-occurrence of the low muscle mass with increased fat mass, and it's termed as a sarcopenic obesity. This marks the, uh, masks the psycho, uh, sarcopenia and delays the intervention. Around 20 to 30 percent of the patients of the cirrhosis have this sarcopenic obesity, and these patients we miss in the OPD as because the patients, the look-wise, they are obese, they are not sarcopenic and it is often the intervention of the malnutritionists are generally delayed in these patients. And these patients have myoesthetosis, which is defined by the fatty infiltration of muscles, both in myocytes and the muscle fascias. 
the majority of the studies diagnose myostosis by the CT, but we can also diagnose this by a uh, bioimpedance analysis and the skeletal muscle index, uh, sorry, the uh, DEXA scans. The cutoff values associated with the higher mortalities in cirrhotics are less than 41 household units in patients with BMI up to 24.9 and less than 33 household units in patients with BMI more than 25. The sarcopenic obesity increases the risk of metabolic and cardiovascular disease, including dyslipidemia, hyperglycemia, insulin resistance, and hypertension. Also, the liver dysfunction, mobility, mobility disability, and ferality. The prevalence of this sarcopenic obesity is 20 to 35 percent, and, and it is associated with an increased mortality. So, if we screen all the patients in our OPD with the DEXA scan or bioimpedance analysis for the fat and muscle composition, we can diagnose around 20 to 30 percent more who have sarcopenia. So, any patient who has more than 25 percent of the muscle more than 25% of the fat content in the body by bioimpedance analysis is sarcopenic obese, obese. And with the DEXA, if in the men, if it is less than seven, skeletal muscle index is less than seven, it is compatible with the diagnosis of sarcopenic obesity. Cirrhotic patients with sarcopenic obesity or myositosis had a worse median survival as compared to the patients with the normal body composition. So, okay. This study has beautifully shown that among all patients who had sarcopenia or patients with obesity or patients with myostrosis, all those patients who had sarcopenia, sarcopenic obesity and myostrosis had worse survival as compared to the other patients who had sarcopenia or obesity. So the sarcopenia and myostrosis, if both are present, the patient had a worse survival. Coming to the uh, micronutrients and cirrhosis, I will cover briefly only. The most prevalent is vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D levels less than 20 should be treated in all the cirrhotics. Vitamin K deficiency is prevalent in patients with the cholestatic liver disease and in the patients who have jaundice. This can lead to the coagulation derangements. Vitamin D deficiency should also be treated with a short course of vitamin because it can lead to the anemia and the neuropathy. Zinc deficiency should also be treated because it is important in the causation of hepatic encephalopathy, and also it can cause leaky gut, which can promote dysbiosis. Selenium deficiency has been implicated in the promotion of the insulin resistance and the fibro fibrosis progression. Manganese is generally seen in excess in the cirrhotic patients, and it can uh, accumulate in the brain, leading to the hepatic, hepatic Parkinsonism. So excess manganese supplementation should be avoided. The osteoporosis and osteopenia should also be investigated by DEXA scan uh, and bone mineral density. Any patients who have T score less than minus 1.5 should be treated with the bisphosphonates. So coming to the conclusion, the prevalence of malnutrition in patients with cirrhosis is high. Prelity and sarcopenia are important phenotypes. Sarcopenia is a robust uh, predictor of wide spectrum of outcomes in adults with cirrhosis, including mortality, both before and after liver transplantation, hepatic decompensations, reduced quality of life, increased risk of infection and prolonged hospitalization. Prelity has been strongly linked with the mortality in both ambulatory and acute care settings. Obesity management can prevent the complications of cirrhosis and the micronutrient supplementation should be considered in all the cirrhotics. Thank you.